All right, this is going to be a really quick uh, kind of demo just to get you going with EXRs. There's a lot more to cover, but um, I at least want to get you a, a general working process so you can see how to use the tools. Uh, so what we have here is a project you may recognize from one of your classmates. And what we have is a, a setup where we have um, a series of models that are sitting on a plane that has a V-Ray material wrapper applied to it. Uh, I've created a, a layer setup for it, a uh, render setup called CarPass. And I've created a geometry collection that includes all the geometry. And then I've taken the uh, water surface, the reflective surface that you see in that image called water surface is just a poly polygon. And I've applied a shader override and attached uh, a V-Ray material wrapper to the surface. We've already talked about this in class. Uh, so you should be uh, comfortable or familiar with doing that. Um, and so, uh, and attached to that is this material that's that's very reflective so that we can try and get some of the, the sky and stuff like that in the image. Um, you can see over in the scene I have a, um, a, a plane that is a reflection plane on the right hand side that has the, uh, uh, the uh, chapel over near the pond and that has an alpha channel applied to it so it's essentially a cutout of the building itself and that's providing some reflections in the surface and then you can see that I've added a V-Ray dome light for the lighting and I've attached an HDR to it. Uh, you'll notice that the do dome is not spherical. It's only half spherical or semi-spherical, basically because we didn't need to see the ground uh, that was in the HDR in the reflection since it's a pond. Um, but that takes care of that part of it. Uh, let's see, I've got a light that's trained on that reflective device there. Uh, it's just a regular V-Ray rect light. Um, in my settings, everything is set up uh, 4K, 4096 by 2160. We've talked about that. Uh, in my V-Ray settings, I've turned the sampler to bucket. Uh, normally, it's set to progressive. It's set to bucket uh, so that crypto mat will work. You won't get your crypto mats uh, rendering unless you um, apply it on the right-hand side as a... Uh, and I have them set as to the material name. That way, each material applied to the geometry is its own color. Uh, if you do it with geometry, then it could be that you'll you won't be able to select some smaller areas of your, of your pieces that way. So I've got it select to material name for my crypto mats. All right, I think that pretty much handles that. Um, let's see. I've done all of my tuning of my image in the uh, in V-Ray uh, before I set about doing my final render. You can see the reflection off to the right there. You can see the reflections in the water. It's okay. It needs a lot of work. But again, this is just a setup. Uh, you can see that I have it set properly with the V-Ray material wrapper so that I ha can isolate my shadows and reflections and, you know, tweak them and composite if I want to. There's my global illumination pass. There's my reflection pass. And here's my crypto mat pass. You can see how there's an individual color for each material in the model. So I can select those little chunks in compositing and you know selectively replace color you'll notice there's this kind of a gray haze over part of the image that's because there's some uh, transparency with the uh, water surface element uh, and so we'll want to deal with that in compositing uh, notice also that you know as i've told you you don't render out your background image when you render out exrs typically but in v-ray it has this nice capability to add a background layer which means then you could lo you can locate an image plane inside your source images folder and apply that to your background so that you can or to your rendered image so that you can so you can uh, see what it looks like against the background just for proofing uh, purposes. But it doesn't get rendered out with your image when you batch render. Um, let's see. Yeah, so yeah, we'll just say batch render once we're done. Uh, and this guy is ready to go to composite. So that's just a quick overview of the, of the Maya, the Maya process. So we'll switch over to After Effects, and in After Effects, um, 
you can see that this is the EXR file that I'll be working with. That's the one that we just rendered out. It's only like, I think, what was it, 42 megabytes, something like that. And I'll open up After Effects. The beauty is, is that After Effects now has all the EXR stuff built in automatically. So you don't have to do any plug-in installation and loading and stuff like that. It's all ready to go for EXR work. It's not something that I normally use. I, I prefer Nuke, but uh, so I'm not going to go into a bunch of detail on how to work with After Effects. That's up to you. Uh, but the first thing you'll want to do is import your EXR. And I'll navigate over to my EXR file in my image folder. And once I find that, images, car pass, car project underscore js exr now you want to set up your settings properly so what i want is a composition and i want it to retain the layer sizes that i have in there and i want it to create a composition for me if i had multiple images if i was rendering the sequence i'd check that open exr sequence and it would apply those settings to every one of my images which is nice say open and i want to tell it to make a composition Precompose my layers and make myself a contact sheet. As soon as it does that, it creates a folder. Look in the folder, and the first thing you'll probably want to look at is your contact sheet. Double click on it, and you'll see that this is the uh, document that shows all the individual passes that you rendered out in your, in your rendering. You, when you select them, it'll select the appropriate one in your in your composition down at the bottom. So there's our RGBA source. I would normally render that out as a diffuse channel, but again, this is all, we're, we're playing catch up here, or just getting started, beginning. Uh, but there's our reflections. Uh, you can see down at the bottom, there's our crypto mats. They're all built in. All right. So the next thing we'll want to take a look at is our assembly. So I can just close that if I want to come over here and double click on my assembly. And that is uh, kind of a rough assembly of all the different passes into the image. And you'll see that's, that's what we got. But notice, again, there's no background. So we got to get a background in here. Um, typically, you wouldn't necessarily tweak this particular composition. You might open up, a, start your own composition from scratch, and then just bring in just the channels that you know you want to work with, because some of these are empty that... that were assigned by using the preset in, in V-Ray in Maya. Uh, but uh, in this case, we'll go ahead and just work with this existing composition. I'll import our background image, uh, go into my source images folder, make sure you choose the full size 4K composition worthy uh, uh, image, not your 25% or 50% background image that you use in the Maya interface. Remember, we talked about how in Maya it wants to have a small resolution image plane in order to work quickly. Check Create Composition if you want to make a, a new composition you're starting with. In this case, I, I don't want a composition. I just want to bring in the image itself, and I'm going to hack or modify the uh, assembly uh, piece, uh, assembly composition that was created for me when I imported the XR. I want to turn off the crypto map pass because that's kind of a different animal. Uh, you can leave it there because if you decide you want to do some crypto mat work, there are plenty of tutorials on YouTube on how to do crypto mats. Um, so you can leave it in your composition and just turn it off. That way it doesn't get in the way. Um, all right. I need to move my RGBA down to the bottom. Right now it's at the very top. So I'm going to select my RGBA channel. And I'm going to pull it down to the bottom. Uh, yeah. And actually what I need to do is, yeah, let me just, I'm going to set all of these to add. There we go. All right. Oh. Yep. Oh, I should have left it there. Hang on a second. There we go. I need to pull that guy down. Pull it down. There you go. And then I need to select all of the others and change them to add. So what I'm doing is, is I'm taking, I'm adding these passes on top of the ones below it. And you can multi, you can multi-select and say add, uh, and it'll change all of them. And so there we are. We're back to our our 
uh, beauty pass that we had before with our background included now. All right, see our reflections there, all that stuff. Reflections in the uh, Model A there, the works. Now we have this little kind of uh, gray area over here, which is the alpha of our, uh, our uh, water. In reality, in Maya, if we did we had more time, you would change that geometry so that uh, it lined up with the actual photographic background plate so that you don't have to deal with uh, uh, masking. But I'm going to go ahead and mask here. And I'm not going to go into detail or do a really you know, detailed mask. It's not that important at this point. But I'll draw a mask around the perimeter. fancy and close it off all right notice how it cut out all of that extraneous alpha stuff going on and now we have ourselves a nice complete comp ready to do stuff to um, all right, the best way to do stuff to this is just to select the layer that you want to work with and you can, you know, enhance your shadows, you can change the colors of objects, you can do uh, all sorts of things. So one of the main things that you probably will want to do to your models, notice how crisp and a little too crispy that CG work is in comparison to the background plate, right? Especially with highly reflective things like that, it looks like it's uh, really sharp. And so that's because there's noise in the background of a real analog camera or a digital camera image uh, that doesn't exist in the CG world. So we probably want to add some grain. So I've selected that RGBA layer, which is the one that is kind of the primary one in the way we've configured this render. And uh, let me add a little bit of noise to it. And I'll turn up the intensity a little bit. And we can look in that little preview area and you'll see that there's beginning to be some noise there to kind of tone that down. I can turn it now to my final output and it'll apply that to the entire area. And that'll kind of soften that stuff up and make it look more like it's contextual. There's a lot of tweaking and stuff that needs to be done to this uh, graphic to make it really production worthy, but you can see at this point you've got a good starting point for uh, making a composite. You can, once, you, once you're happy, you can render this thing out uh, put some nice lens flares on it and stuff, and you'll be you'll be rocking, making a nice composite. All right.